Well, it's Friday, and you all know what that means. That means we got AEW Rampage. As you know, this is another go-home show prior before we head to All Out. So anything's a possibility. But we do feature, of course, the ROH World uh, Tag Team Battle Royale. The winners will get a shot of the ROH Tag Team titles against MJF and Adam Cole at All Out. And of course, plenty of things are going to take place prior before that. And then, of course, we're going to see who's going to level up on this latest episode of NXT Level Up. But first things first, we're heading straight to Japan from this past weekend on the 26th of August. Tokyo Ushu Pro Wrestling put out a pretty interesting show with um, Happy Summer Vacation. Uh, well, you can say it is a happy summer because it was extremely hot over there. But we're going to have a little interesting matchups taking place as well. And then, of course, we have some news updates to tell what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling, such as what events the promotions are putting out, who is booked, who is, in fact, what matches are set, and, of course, any signed wrestlers, injured wrestlers, the whole enchilada. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Right here. So if you are new to the channel, welcome. If you like pro wrestling and you want to hear what reviews we've been throwing about, this is your channel for you. If you like this channel, please subscribe to us. But if also if you like this episode, please give us a like or a comment down below. So let's get started with our very first review. And this is coming from Yoshi Promotion, Tokyo Yoshi Pro Wrestling. Now they just recently back in the weekend had a interesting uh, show called A Happy Summer Vacation. This took place on August 26th. So let's start from the very beginning. Uh, of course, the Up Up Girls consistent of Shino Suzuki, Raku, Hikari Noah, Emi Iwanabe did the little performance. I uh, cannot recall the name of it. I was like hoping it's either uh, Shiny Mark or Up Up Kick or whatever, the Upper Kick, I think, whatever. But it was a really good performance. Now, our first match of of the, uh, of the day, it features Runa Okubo taking on Kaya Toribami. Now, um, as I said before, it's been a while since I've done many of the Tokyo Show Pro Wrestling events. But um, Runa is one of the new girls I never heard of, uh, never seen. But I have to say, I know deep down we will see her grow up. But Kaya Toribami is one of those wrestlers we have seen a lot. But she uh, has won wet matches here and there. But I say she's improving a whole lot more, you know, since she was a rookie. So she was able to pick up a win by a submission. And that was pretty much it. Next up, we have a three-way match. We got Shino Suzuki. Um, Haruna Neko and Mahiro Kiru. Now, I knew from the very beginning that th this is, uh, of course, really going to be interesting. Where Kiru, once again, with her apologetic moment, saying, I'm sorry, and that's pretty much it. But I wasn't too sure exactly how this was going to end. But I have seen Kiru grown up so much ever since she joined Tokyo Show Pro Wrestling. Uh, she was able to finish off the match with a spine buster on Suzuki. One, two, three, and it was done. Next up, we have tag team action. We have Toya, uh, Toya and Hikari Noah taking on um, Haru and Kaz uh, Haru um, Kashino. And, of course, the resident superhero, Hyper Misawa. Now, I don't know what Hyper Misawa was thinking. Those who know this... Um, Hikari Noah is a big fan of 
hardcore and death matches. Now, we rarely don't see her participate in those type of matches at all, but she does get a tend to be violent. So, Hyper Masao was trying to play the smart game, try to use that against her, knowing that this will be much an easier way for her to win. But, come on. You cannot beat someone who specializes in that. I mean, look at Hikari Noah's scars on her back. You know, those are real war wounds. I don't even recall if Hyper Masao has any uh, scars on her back. But, you know, that's how I see it. She even brought a firework, for Christ's sakes, thinking that would help. But, nope, it did not. But luckily, it was Hikari Noah who picked up the win with a nice running lariat onto to, uh, onto um, Haru Kazashino, and pretty much that's pretty much it. So, sorry, Hyper, your little tactic did not work this time. Now, our next match, we have a very interesting uh, singles match. We have um, Rika Tatsumi taking on, uh, what's his name again? Oh, yeah, Demonio Dos. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, a little demon-like wrestler, I don't know. But this match was beyond anything. It did not just take place in the ring. It also took place outside. Now, you probably can say, that wasn't Rika Tatsumi afraid? I mean, yes and no. I mean, she can be afraid only if she's afraid to lose. But Rika Tatsumi is a bit predictable. She is very, very, um, how do I put this in her in Latin terms? Well, she likes to do things that are beyond her capability. I mean, if you don't believe me, ask the ring announcer what she did last uh, last year or two years ago. Uh, Hyper Masao had a gun in her head, and of course, uh, Rika Tsumi tossed her in the slide. Of course, the ring announcer said that she got a little roughed up, that she never experienced this, that Rika Tsumi should not have done that, but she did. But she wasn't too afraid. But Rika Tsumi did pick up a nice win when she applied the hip attack one two three it was over but demonio dos was not having it he completely lost control but of course rigatsumi was able to win now uh next match this one is called a chu summer party tides match now this is where it, where if you ever attend a match like this in tokyo Show Pro wrestling uh make sure you are bringing extra towel because uh there was a lot of water guns being used so was water balloons the whole thing so it became like i seen something like this before like a couple of years ago uh where of course the magical sugar rabbits were in a match against uh nodoka temna and of course uh, our current w uh stardom star mina shirakawa uh yes there's a match of that they did something similar at another location but this time in this match, we have uh, team number one, Pam Harajuku and Shoko Nakajima taking on Imawari and Mizuki. So this was a very interesting match. Now, Pam, uh, she's a bit more outgoing, very predictable in some capacity, but not in a violent way. Like she likes to try to put some dirty tricks if, if it's possible, but uh, not this time. But in this case, it was Mizuki who picked up the win when she put her in the, in the little kiddie pool, put Pom right there, and one, two, three, it was done. Now, our main event, we have a six-woman tag match. Team number one, we have Moka Miyamoto, Raku, and Yuki Aino uh, taking on Wakana Uihara um, um, and Suzumi, and of course... Miu Wananabe. Now, of course, um, I have seen many of these wrestlers. Uh, Yuki, uh, she's of course been the singles wrestler for quite some time. For instance, last year, stepping out of her sister's shadow, who retired last year. Um, of course, uh, Moka Miyamoto has uh, excelled a lot. So does Raku. Uh, Suzumi, well, she is one of the most rising stars. And of course, Miu Wananabe, we know that she has the capability one day to pick up the princess of princess champion one day uh but we will see when that day happens but i think the x factor is this that is what kind of because a um she's still kind of um less experienced than the others if you might add i kind of figured that was going to play a factor into this match but of course um you know the strength of Mi wananabe has always been very impressive but in this case it was yuki aino who I said, like I said before, stepping out of her sister's shadow, uh, she picked up a really good win when she applied a 
somewhat of a DDT onto um, Wakana, and that was it, just like that. Uh, pretty good show, but that's how it is. And I think that's pretty much it what we have for Tokyo Show Pro Wrestling, so let's move on with AEW Rampage. Okay, AEW Rampage. Open up with the ROH uh, Tag Team Battle Royale. Now, as you know, we have brand new ROH Tag Team Champions, and it is, of course, Adam Cole and uh, MJF. This was something I think many fans were happy and exciting for, to see those two win Tag Team Gold. But, however, the obvious question does tell who is going to be the next challengers. Now, it was no surprise to me when this Battle Royale was announced that, of course, Ozzy Open, the previous tag team holders, were going to the were going to be involved. But we did have plenty others. We had the Outlanders involved, Dark Order, Silver and Reynolds, um, the Hardys. Who else is in there? Oh yeah, Righteous, consistent of uh, Vinny Vincent, and of course uh, Butch. Who else is in this one? Oh yeah, the Best Friends. Yeah, plenty others. But I think the obvious thing is who was gonna walk more now. Ozzy Open played the smart game, being outside the ring, trying to take out the competition, try to uh, soften them up in order to win, which, of course, was a bit effective. But, however, uh, in the end, it seems like the best friends could have gotten an opportunity, but, however, it was the Dark Order who walked out because uh, Reynolds, who was eliminated, Johnny Hungy, was the one who was listening to Reynolds' plan what to do and of course they picked up the win which was a surprising move so we will see Reynolds and Silver taking on MJF and Adam Cole this coming Sunday at All Out so we'll see how that turns out but however speaking of tag teams Ozzy Open on their way out decided to confront M uh, Jericho who is in fact doing commentary with um, Tony Schiavone and Excalibur now you ask yourselves why would they get involved well, as you know, uh, Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara are going to give their little tag team run an opportunity. And they said that they would like to be AEW tag team champions. However, that does not sit well for Aussie Open. Now, Aussie Open, as you know, are trying to be the, the, uh, the best tag team in the world. Because, as you know, many are saying that FTR are the best tag team world. But to them, they see that that's a load of horse crap in their honest opinion. But luckily, Sammy showed up to give a helping hand. So sooner or later, those two teams will have to face each other, no matter what. Now, uh, we have an interesting tag team pairing. We have Nick Wayne teaming up with Hijo del Vikingo. Now, of course, with Nick coming out, everybody were concerned for the well-being of Darby Allen. So uh, there's been talk about that. But hopefully he'll be fine by this Sunday because he's facing, facing Luchasaurus. Now, their opponents is none other than Kip Sabian and Gringo Loco. Now, I have seen a bit of a rivalry between Gringo Loco and Alpha and, and Vikingo many times over. Not only in GCW, but also down in Mexico. But this is an interesting pairing between Nick Wayne and Vikingo the pin up, the pin up. But, of course, you'll be amazed what they do. I think because the reason these guys, I have to say, was a good pairing for, two, for uh, one particular reason... They're gen generational wrestlers. Basically, they're following their father's footsteps. But it was, of course, Vikingo with the 630 that put away um, Gringo Loco out of commission. And that was it. So we would like to see more of these guys team up. See how they can get together. Now, something interesting has taken place with QTV. Now, um, QT Mar Marshall... As you know, as the AAA Latin American champion, he decided to put his belt on the line, made a trip to the UK, and, of course, put his belt on the line against anybody. However, something else is happening, and I don't know exactly how QT would feel about it. It appears that Johnny Swinger decides that he wants to run the entire show. So, basically, it's going to be a hostile takeover. Uh, I don't know what QT would make of this, I mean, he was the one who brought him into this into this whole thing, but it is what it is. Now, our next match, we have, you know, our very own cowboy himself, Hangman Adam Page, with some cowboy shiznits, 
taking on the bounty hunter Brian Keith. Of course, the bounty hunter was there to, of course, to, to collect. But this was a very impressive match. Now, the reason I say this is because you probably wouldn't expect a whole lot more was going to happen. But Brian Keith, as you know, has been well recognized in the independents, um, you know, best matches and all that. But one thing that was amazing is, of course, uh, there was a, the way that, of course, Hangman a was able to apply his skill sets to counter, like knowing that Brian Keith was going to um, anticipate his every move. But the one thing he did not anticipate at the end, of course, he knew the buckshot letter was going to come. But I don't think he, I think he miscalculated on the last effort when Hangman decided to take him out. So basically, the bounty hunter doesn't get his his collection. So that's pretty much how it goes. Now, uh, recently, as you know, the acclaim said that they will put the AEW World's Trios Tag Team Titles on the line on Collision. So the honest question does tell who will respond to the challenge. Well, uh, former members of the JSA, uh, JAS, um, Matt Menard, uh, Angela Parker, and Daniel Garcia responded to this. Now, this is their way of trying to hopefully feel now that they don't need to be held back anymore by Chris Jericho. Uh, now they can try to step up and try to shine even more by winning the, the trio styles. That's something that they are determined so we'll see what happens now another interview conducted um this was requested by roderick strong however roderick refuses to tell the story now everybody wanted to hear his side of the story of what's been going on between him and and adam cole but he refuses to say it because he feels that i'm gonna say it on my own time like it's like dude you requested this time why are you why are you wasting time? So he wants Adam Cole to say the real truth, what really happened. Of course, we all don't know what he's referring to, but we'll see. In our main event, we have ladies tag team action. We have Anna J teaming up with um, Tail Valkyrie. Now, Jericho did say something interesting about Anna J. He said that it's interesting that, of course, Menard and Parker were not there by her side. But uh, who knows how things are going to go. But he does have the absolute confidence of... Of Anna J, of what she's gonna do. But however, she's facing against two formidable opponents. First, is, of course, is Will Nightingale, who we all love and adore so much. But since Rampage is in Chicago, the hometown girl Sky Blue was over there to, to shine. So you probably could guess that this match will fall in favor to Sky Blue since she is from Chicago and so, and that was gonna be the X factor to win. And of course, it did. She applied the code blue onto, um, Anna J to pick up the win, but of course Tail Valkyrie will decide to spoil the little celebration. But luckily Willow decided to give her a helping hand. But there's no doubt in my mind that Sky Blue will definitely get a little payback for Tail Valkyrie for this. So we'll see how that goes. So uh, for the following day, cannot forget AEW Collision. So we'll see how that one rolls out. So right now let's move on to our last and final review, NXT Level Up. Okay, so who levels up on this latest episode of NXT Level Up? Let's find out. Our very first match is none other than Big Body Javi, Javier Bernard, taking on this new guy named Riley Osborne. Now, to me, as I've been watching um, NXT Level Up, in the back of my mind, this ma I thought this match was definitely go into the favor of Javi Bernard, because, uh, Javier Bernard due to the fact of him being there the longest. But you have a guy uh, who's kind of new in um, in this matter that he probably would not have had a share of fare. But his quickness was very interesting to watch. Um, he looked more like the hallmarkings of a cruiserweight wrestler, which we haven't had a cruiserweight title for a long time. But it was, of course, the shooting star press that he applied onto Javier Bernal to pick up the win. So I'm sure we will see more of that with him. Uh, see what his quickness can do now before our next match uh that we had that relates to this uh of course stevie turner had an interview with um kelly as you know we haven't seen her for quite some time but however 
um, her opponent. It's none other than Valentina Faraz. Uh, she said that she will, of course, beat her no matter what because she knows how to outsmart her. Well, you can say if she did. I mean, Valentina Faraz, as you know, has gained a lot of recognition with some great matches she had, both singles and tag team. But, however, Stevie, who has been sharpening her her skills, has played out pretty well. Now, somehow, in, in some point of this match, uh, Stevie was able to use Valentina's momentum against her. And, of course, she applied um, a very interesting move. And then, of course, a pinfall, one, two, three. And I'm sure she's going to put the entire women's locker room on notice. Now, our main event, this is continuing with more of the NXT Global um, Heritage um, Invitational with Group B. Uh, we have Duke Hudson representing Chase University. And, of course, um, his opponent is Akira Tozawa. Now, Akira Tozawa, in this particular match, uh, many fans were cheering for him because, of course, of his unbelievable match that he had. Um, who was it against he had it with? With Gunther? I'm not, uh, whoever. But anyway, uh, basically he was the fan favorite in this match. I mean, it would make absolute sense in that capacity because of it. But, um, however, uh, it was Duke Hudson with a somewhat version of the Razor's Edge that gave him the win on this one and allowing him gaining his two points. So, so far he and uh, who else? They have, are currently in the lead with two points. While everybody else in their group has zero. So I think that's pretty much it what we have for NXT level up. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but we will continue to, to follow more on the NXT Global Heritage Invitational. So I think that's pretty much it for now. So let's move on with our final thing. News updates. <laughs> Okay, now, for all you Stardom fans out there, you may have noticed recently on their Twitter page that there was some sort of a um, countdown taking place. Well, it turned out it was a press conference. So, I don't know. I thought personally that that was a result of a brand new star coming. But there was a press conference involving um, three title matches of, sign of signing the contracts. Of course, it features the high-speed belt between Saki Kashima versus Momokogo, who, of course, Kashima nominated as her opponent. And, of course, we had the New Japan Strong Women's title. Uh, Julia defends that belt against her old pal, uh, Risa Sera. And then, of course, the white belt between Mirai and Konami. Now, the most interesting thing that took place during the press conference was the signing between uh, Mirai and Konami. Now... Uh, how did we get to this point with this whole thing between those two? Well, if you guys remember clearly, Saki Kashima was one of the newer members of God's Eye after she was expelled from Oedo Tai. Now, recently, Konami, who made her re uh, made her return to the team, as you know, she only wrestles uh, part uh, uh, part time due to her health issues that she had dealt with in the past. Um, apparently, lost a match due to Kashima. Of course, um, Konami has been very, became vocal about, you know, not over how, what God's Eye were all about, you know, going, uh, all about fighting and all that. But Mirai actually defended Kashima. And of course, this whole thing with the white belt became the thing, the talk of it. But however, the much recent development is what Konami said. If she beats Mirai for the white belt, then she said that she will return to stardom full time. Uh, so it looks like she put herself in a very high stake match. So we'll see how that goes. Now, if you're a big fan of New Japan Pro Wrestling, then you guys follow the Young Lions. Now, we have seen recent of Young Lions who make excursions in different locations. Now, our much recent wrestlers that came back from their excursions such as uh yodo suji who actually went to ref pro and then mexico and of course we have shota umino 
who spent two years in the UK with Rev Pro, and of course, uh, Ren Narita, who was here in the States at the LA Dojo. They all had some great impacts, but however, we never had a situation where a young lion uh, decided to go on excursion domestically. Now, his excursion was very unique. As you know, we had Keito Kiyomiya participate in the G1. Now, he did not win the G1, uh, but he teamed up with a young lion, and that is uh, Rohi Oiwa. Now, for some odd reason, he was sort of scouting Oiwa, telling him that he should come by to Noah. So he basically will spend his excursion in Noah. Now, I cannot recall if there's ever been any young lion in New Japan who's ever done a domestic um, excursion. That is something we don't know. We have seen wrestlers like uh, the Great Okan, who's been on excursion, uh, Master Wato, um, who else? Plenty others we have seen over the years. But having domestically, that's something I have never heard of in my life. But if there has been, please leave a comment. I'd like to know if there's anybody besides done it, but we'll see. Now, uh, as we speak, we should be having this match already. Um, as you know, All Japan are allowing Yoshi wrestlers to participate in their shows. Uh, one of the most recent announcements was having uh, Millie McKenzie, Chihiro Hashimoto, and of course uh, you, um, Eureka Oka all represent Sendai Girls taking on um, Michiko, AOI, and Lena Cross. So this is going to be interesting to see these Yoshi wrestlers participate. Now, Fightful Select put this article about Santana, and he said this. Four months after uh, making my debut, uh, my dad died. So apparently he's making this notion clear to Christian Cage. As you know, he has a tendency to say negative comments saying, I'm glad that your dad is dead. Uh, so I'm. It's more like he is daring him to say something negative, so he can beat the crap out of him. I wouldn't be surprised if Christian Cage has the balls to do it, but we'll see how that rolls up. Now, speaking of New Japan Pro Wrestling, as you know, uh, last weekend, um, last week, we lost one of the most two recognizable wrestlers, but. One of them had a big impact in Japan, and that is, of course, the late Terry Funk. New Japan announced for their um, September 8th show, um, The Road to Destruction, that they will do a 10-bell salute in honor of Terry Funk. So I think that's a pretty good thing that they uh, did, but um, yeah. Now, I haven't reported this a whole lot, you know, about... What happened at an all out and all in regarding, um, of course, CM Punk and Jack Perry? Now, we all know what happened. Apparently, there was the report saying that uh, there was an altercation between them. There's been a lot of this, but however, this was came around, uh, that of course, um, was shared about what happened. Like, this is the actual story from what we hear. So, this is what wrestling observers put out. The version of All Out incident Jack Perry told is that C after his match, CM Punk came to him with a lot of problem around and said, do we have a problem? Perry said no. Perry said that Punk, that he said enough and got online about him and that line using the term Crimea River. Uh, Punk then said words to effect, you, you know I could fuck... Uh, fuck you up and at any time right and he then plea uh face perry and tried to put the guillotine on on him and also threw uh, some punches while perry grabbed punk's arm and tried to keep him locked in the move samoa joe came in and quickly broke it up so basically that's from what they're saying from the wrestling observer the actual story happened of course there's been a lot of conflicting reports about that uh, we do know that these two guys are suspended, but uh, we'll see what happens until then. If there's any other news, then, of course, I'll put it out. 
but until then, um, we'll just leave it at that. So I think right now we should just uh, call it a day. All right. I uh, hope everybody enjoys this episode. Coming up, I'll be doing a special edition of the Neat DWZ News Updates uh, regarding the Yoshi promotion that's been set that will be, um, of course, launching uh, uh, in September uh, in New York City. So there's more information about that, and I'll be doing that by itself. Now, for the next episode, I know we have AEW Collision. I haven't decided yet what's going to happen, but I do know we have Sendai Girls with their upcoming show, with their latest show, Big um, big Show in uh, Niigata. Um, we'll, we'll see how that rolls up. Uh, we do have the latest GCW show. Well, we'll find out how that rolls out as well. But as for now, I'll see you guys in the upcoming, in, on the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. And have a nice day.